What's good, YouTube? Back again with another video. And in today's video, we're going to have a discussion. So I've been thinking about doing this video for quite some time, and I decided to pull the trigger on doing it today. And again, this is more of a discussion video. So basically, the topic's going to be lighter garments equals or means better quality. Now, in the Jersey community, usually we kind of grew up in an era where we've had this thick, heavy jerseys that had thick, heavy twill. And we, I guess, equate that to having better quality on jerseys. Now, of course, if you're talking heat pressed versus stitching, durability is going to play a huge factor in which one I prefer. I'm talking about just weight and performance of the actual garments. To me, what Nike's been doing and all the other companies are following suit. So Adidas is doing it with NHL. Adidas is doing it with soccer jerseys. I believe Nike has pretty much every major sport other than hockey. But we've seen the transition with baseball. It started with Majestic going from regular polyester to that flex-based material that they used. So we've seen the transition of having these heavy garments and getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, right? We've also seen this transition in sneakers. So imagine playing in a David Robinson Air Force in this day and age. Like it's, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. It's, I mean, it's crazy to think that that was the performance sneaker back then. I'll even go as far as to say any of the Jordans. Any of the Jordans probably pre Jordan 11 is pretty heavy. Maybe the Jordan 7 being the lightest, depending on the materials on that sneaker. But everything else is kind of like boats. And the cushioning wasn't as good as it is now. I think there's a reason why we see a lot of these NBA players and they're pretty jacked up. They're wearing canes or they're in a wheelchair and they just put so much mileage on their knees and didn't have really the technology that we have to keep their body, you know, healthy for the long run. So to me, what Nike's been doing, and I'm going to use Nike as an example, because again, they have the NBA license, they have the NFL license, they do soccer teams, they do baseball. So I'm going to keep it Nike. And I'm also going to show you a couple of sneakers that I think is just ahead of the game when it comes to Nike. Now, of course, other companies follow suit, but I think Nike kind of spearheads a lot of the technology going forward when it comes to sports performance, right? So give you an example, right? I had two pieces of garments here. I have a basketball short here. This is a vapor knit. Sounds familiar for all my NBA heads. This is a vapor knit basketball short, right? And right away, you see the breathability on these shorts and when I put these shorts on versus putting on your average Mitchell and S shorts your average you know swingman Nike shorts these shorts are much much lighter and have additional features that we'll go over real quickly so I'm not going to go crazy about the additional features because I'm really focused more on the lightweight of what Nike's been doing. But they do have some dope features. So they have this panel here you could wipe your hands with. If your hands get a little sweaty, guys do sweat. You may put your hand on them. Then you touch the ball, it's kind of gross. So this gives you a way to kind of dry off your hands, right? This one has a belt line to keep your shorts on your waist. So it has really cool features, but most important is it has these ventilation holes and it's super lightweight. Right, so this is one of my favorite shorts to play in. And then another word that I know you're gonna be familiar with is Arrow Swift, right? So take a look at that. Now, Arrow Swift is the first material used in the 2017-18 season for NBA jerseys. And we're gonna take a look at one of them very soon. So Arrow Swift to me is a lighter material, a thinner material than Vaporknit. I didn't realize it after having Vaporknit jerseys and Arrow Swift jerseys in hand. There's no doubt about that the Arrow Swift jerseys 
are a little bit thinner and a little bit lighter. They also have huge perforation holes. And again, Nike moved away from it because the durability of the garment wasn't as good as they wanted. So unfortunately, they were ripping left and right. And that led to Nike going to VaporNet, which now we're on Nike Dry Fit Advance. But the first garment that we have is Aeroswift. Now, I bought this to work out in. It's actually great to play basketball in. This is really a runner's garment. This is a runner's tank top. And when I tell you, when you put this on, it's almost as if you have nothing on. You're about as naked as you can be without being naked. It's amazing. And it's so crazy that once you put anything else on after that, it's very noticeable, right? And I wanna kind of play into that. So it's weird when you go ahead and put on, you know, a piece of basketball, you know, shirt, shorts, and you don't really think about it. Same thing with sneakers. Like, it's crazy to have something on or to put on something and it's so light, it's almost like it's not there. It's not a distraction. And then the minute you put on something heavier, it's like, shit, what the fuck do I have on? So that's what I'm saying. Like when it comes to performance, man, lighter is better for me, in my opinion, as long as it is durable. And that's something we're going to get into as well. If it's durable and it's lighter, to me, that's the highest quality we can possibly have for us playing sports and playing our favorite games and doing our favorite workouts and trying to, you know, have better runs, whatever sport or whatever you're into, to me, the better quality garments are lighter and durable. All right, so that's this tank top here. I actually would love to add more of these because they're so good. So that's that, right? Now we get into the sports. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this jersey here. Okay. Now, when you compare this jersey to this jersey, <laughs> it's crazy how big of a difference this is. I'm going to take them off the hanger because that wood hanger may play a role in weight. Yes, it's it's a extremely noticeable difference. These are both size 52s or double XLs. This is size 56, which is a double XL. But it's a clear cut difference on weight between this and between this. Now this is a DeMar DeRozan Arrow Swift Raptors jersey. And we see the big, huge perforations on the back. They've kind of gone away from this going this big. This could have been a reason why the jerseys were ripping. So they went with tighter mesh holes. I know that's for sure. But as you can see, that's a huge, huge difference in mesh. And then you have these and the mesh holes from Mitchell and S, they're pretty tight for the most part. I think Nike and Champion had a little bit bigger mesh holes, but the twill on this is crazy. The mesh on this is crazy. The trim on this is crazy. Like my arms are getting tired <laughs> just holding this jersey up, right? And then this jersey, it's a world of a difference. And I know I've said this before and you guys are probably think I'm crazy, but it's the nicest jersey to wear. As far as a fabric on your body, as far as how light this is, to me, this is the best jersey to wear as far as how it feels on your body. So Nike went super lightweight. I'll even say, and I think I have a Revolution 30 jersey over here. Hold on one second. Hold on. So we have a Revolution 30 jersey, same size. And you want to talk about high performance, Adidas was killing it with the Revolution 30 jerseys. And I'll tell you why. First off, when it comes to perforations, I mean, this one has a ton of perforations, right? You have pretty much all throughout the jersey. 
Same thing like Nike does now. They kind of have their little zones, pretty much the whole back of the jersey, the whole front of the jersey. They do have like a little pattern and some solid pieces and then smaller mesh holes on the sides, but very perforated jersey. All right, this one's actually heavier than the Nike one. Why I think it's heavier is because of the crest. So Adidas didn't skip out on the crest and on the twill or whatever you want to call it like nike does nike makes this as thin and as light as possible still stitched so still you know nice material still going to be durable but this is going to be much more thinner and lightweight than this here now what i like what they did with the adidas revolution 30 jersey is they didn't use twill so this is stitched on and then this is a mesh number, and then underneath is mesh as well. So the breathability you get from this is gonna be nice, especially with the jersey perforated underneath, the breathability is gonna be there on this jersey. Now, the stitching is probably taking up a lot of the weight. This is pretty much a tackle twill up top on the name. And then this crest, definitely you could feel the weight from it. It's super thick. It has really good embroidering on it. So I think it takes up most of the weight of the jersey. If they were both blanks with no letters, no numbers, the Adidas may be just as light as this. But because of the letters stitched on or heat pressed on, as we look at Nike, although this is super thin, it also has perforations as well. So again, you're going to get the breathability through the jersey, which is a nice thing, right? So to me, Adidas killed the performance aspects of the Revolution 30 jerseys. Nike's actually lighter. I know people like the Revolution 30 jerseys a little bit more because it has a little bit more bells and whistles, bigger numbers. It's a nice jersey. But as far as performance, Nike's are lighter, right? And that could be due to skipping out on the weight of the twill. That could be due to a lot of things. But if the NBA players like this more because it's a lighter garment and they just feel better to move in, I wouldn't be surprised. I'll put it that way. I wouldn't be surprised if they like the Nike jersey a little bit more, right? So that is the jerseys for the NBA. Now, of course, Nike dabbles in soccer, so does Adidas, so does Puma, so does a bunch of other manufacturers, but I'm sticking with Nike for the moment, and this is an authentic Ronaldo jersey, great jersey, it's Portugal jersey, and what Nike did here is they heat press everything, so even though this crest is embroidered on, or it's an embroidery crest, I should say, it's heat pressed onto the jersey, right? So no stitching to the jersey, no additional stitching, at least, to the jersey. And because of that, it's super lightweight. And then, of course, you see the design within the jersey, which I think Nike does a great job of this, is they create these ventilation patterns. It's also a part of the design of the soccer jersey, which is super dope. The way Nike's able to do it on a soccer jersey, it looks like a design, but it also has functionality, right? These things are great to wear in the summertime. I know I've mentioned that before. These things are awesome to wear in general, but in the summertime, they're great, so light. So that is the soccer jersey, right? We'll take a look at the baseball. Now, I'm hoping Nike does their own thing when it comes to baseball. To me, this is just a copy and paste of the Majestic Flex Base. So you do get your ventilation holes or side panels on the side of the jersey and on the tail of the jersey. So that's pretty cool. You also get a reduction in twill. So back in the days, this would have been a double stitched on the New York with the white and navy layer up top. Now this is a kiss cut, so they're reducing weight in that way. Same thing for the number two on the back. 
This is normally a double stitched number two. Now it's a single twill layer kiss cut. So they're reducing the stitching. They're reducing the amount of twill on the jersey. I'm hoping Nike comes out with their own technology and, and their own innovation when it comes to the baseball jerseys. I have seen some leaks of baseball jerseys with perforations in the twill. Maybe that's the one that has a different dry fit material. That'll be great to have. I also know baseball is a tough season because you start in March, you go through the hottest fucking summer, and then you end up playing in October, which can be very cold depending where you are in the United States. So if you're in the Northeast, October could easily be 40, 50 degrees without a doubt, all right? So hopefully when it comes to baseball, they'll be able to put their own spin on it. But even still, we've seen Majestic go from a really thick polyester to this sort of material, this flex-based material, and Nike just copied and pasted it. Again, it would be great to see Nike do their own thing on this, and I can't wait for that. But the theme still stands. This is a lighter garment, right? And then, last but not least, we have the NFL jerseys. Now, we take a look at the old school NFL jerseys. Thick mesh, heavy dazzle, <laughs> heavy twill. This is probably the lightest version of the NFL jersey that I could have picked from the old school. Uh, I do have actual authentics from the 90s. And when I say they're super heavy, they're super heavy. But it's very, very noticeable how much lighter this is. So we're going to talk about this jersey. And I don't think this jersey gets enough props, right? The Nike Elite NFL jerseys. I'll tell you why. This material, first off, it's almost like a Gore-Tex material. And nobody really talks about it too often. But this actually repels light water right a light rain a light mist the garment itself is going to repel it it's going to bubble up pebble up on the jersey and it doesn't soak in that's crazy that's innovation guys this is something that nike is doing that nobody else did as far as the jersey fit it's a very nice stretch material let me show you what the materials are on this. So it's 100% polyester, which is crazy because I would never thought that. Yeah, 100% polyester. I'm surprised it doesn't have like a spandex or nylon in the material because it has a stretch to it. But this is 100% polyester, right? Now, we've gone with a lighter garment. We've gone with a repel water material. And then we got perforations, and they've been doing perforations for quite some time. But you see the perforations on the bottom of the jersey here. And then you see perforations on the bottom part of this line, this little hem. You see perforations throughout the jersey on this side. Now, of course, when NFL players wear it, it's tapered to their body. So all these perforations are going to really be functional because of that. They had perforations back in the days, so I don't wanna make it sound like they didn't have perforations. You can see the mesh material where the 20 is, is all perforated. And I think they did a great job, but again, this is a lighter garment. This is a water repelling garment. And if you get water on this, it just soaks it up, it gets heavier. This one doesn't. So Nike's innovation on sports performance to me, is quality. People don't think this is quality. Some people may think the Barry Sanders is a higher quality jersey because it's heavier, it's got stitching, and it's this and it's that. But to me, this is innovative, and because of that, it's a higher quality, lighter garment. I love it, right? Now, we're going to talk about sneakers. So in the sneaker world, Right now, I have the Nike GT Jumps. Let me show you them real quick. I went to go outside with my son earlier today. Try to wear them out. 
the little dude has tons of energy. So this is the Nike GT Jump. This is my main outdoor shoe because of a couple of reasons, but it has two huge zoom units, one on the heel, one on the forefoot. And then on top of that, right? So you can see the zoom units, the little green ones right here, both on each side. By the way, this is the sneaker Nikola Jokic plays in. And then you have a full length zoom unit on top of that. And then you have Kushlon, which is another cushioning system surrounding these zoom units. So this has become my main outdoor basketball sneaker because it protects the knees. I play ball in knees and my knees aren't sore at all, right? The only thing I don't like about these personally is the fit. Unfortunately, this is not really a stretch material. And because of that, depending on how much I'm playing these, my foot is a little bit wide. And obviously, you know how that ends. For the amount of cushion, you have crazy support. This is a high-tech sneaker. To me, this is right up there with any LeBron. It's right up there with any KD. It's right up there with any sneaker in general. This is a high-tech sneaker. And if you're a big guy, you'd be thankful to have a sneaker like this because it could save your knees in the long run. And that's something that's important to me, right? I don't want to be walking with the cane, you know, at 60, 70 years old. So it's sneakers like this that's going to help me keep my health for a longer run. So that's the Nike GT Jump, right? Now, I've told you guys before, my favorite sneaker to play in currently is the Jordan 36. So we have the Jordan 36. It's the lightest shoe you can have with the most cushion. It's really the reason why it's my favorite go-to when it comes to playing basketball, other than regular basketball soreness, running up and down the court, you know, I'm a big dude. So it's just one of those things that, of course, my body just needs to get used to. Other than that, my feet feel great. My knees feel great. It's really a fantastic shoe to play basketball in. The theme, right? Lighter weight, breathability. So as you guys can see, this whole upper, which is a weave, it's super durable and super breathable and super light. Again, lightweight, breathable, durable. So it's checking off all the things. Plus, it's a high performance basketball sneaker, full length zoom. Zoom is the greatest innovation to me in basketball Christian technology. It's still being used to this day. It's just amazing to play basketball in, right? So this is the Jordan 36. Here we have the Jordan 11, right? You guys know this sneaker. This shoe was pretty innovative at the time, right? Honestly, it's probably really missing just a few things and it's super playable to this day. If you gave it a full length zoom unit instead of an air unit, it'd be much better already. Maybe a better heel counter and a lighter material. So when this came out, this mesh was something very new. It was a mesh that was already broken in and the patent leather was used as like a reinforcement. It was like today's version of mud guards and heel counters and things you get now, except it was just done in a beautiful, elegant way, right? We're gonna get back to the sneaker because of this guy right here. But the Jordan 36, again, a really, really great sneaker. My favorite sneaker to play in, this is quality to me. You gave it a bunch of technology you made the shoe actually look pretty good, in my opinion. And you made it the lightest it could possibly be, performance-wise. So, to me, this is quality. You have this sneaker. It has 30-year-old technology, right? It's not comfortable. I can't believe MJ even played in this. Not only you played in it, you won a damn championship in it. But it's clunky, it's heavy. It's shit. In the technology way. In a nostalgia way, that's what we're paying for here. We're paying for the nostalgia. This is $200, right? With 30-year-old technology that hasn't been upgraded. And this is the most innovative basketball sneaker, or one of. And this is $185. Now, this particular one was $195. But the regular Jordan 36 is a 185 
this is 200. We're paying money for nostalgia, and here we're really paying for innovation, but they lower the price because they know this shoe is not as popular. This shoe is super popular. They can raise the price to 220 and people will still buy it. This one, they're gonna keep at 185 because they know it's not as popular, but the innovation in this shoe blows in past years, all right? So there's that. But I don't wanna just keep it to basketball sneakers. We have the Nike Zoom X Invincible. This is the most comfortable sneaker I've ever had. Hold on one second. This is the most comfortable sneaker I've put my foot in. Just that simple. Now, Adidas Ultra Boost has kind of been the king for me as far as comfort, walking comfort every day, slip in, walk around, do your bullshit in the backyard. Whatever the case is, your everyday sneaker, the Ultra Boost was crown for me for quite some time. This sneaker by far is the most comfortable sneaker I've had. Most comfortable Nike sneaker, most comfortable sneaker I've ever worn. This is incredible. So this Zoom X is super light. And we're gonna get into the performance portion of the Zoom X. But in general, this is a great sneaker. It's a hundred bucks a sneaker right now on sale. Maybe 120, 130. Guys, all girls, try the sneaker out. This is one of the best sneakers I've ever put on, period. Super comfortable. This would probably be my vacation sneaker. If I had to go to like Disney World or a place where I'm going to be walking throughout the day, this is the sneaker I'm bringing now. No more Ultra Boost. Ultra Boost is done. This is the sneaker that I'm bringing. So, again, super lightweight, man. Super lightweight. The fly knit's like really nice. These are dope, right? And then we get to this beauty. Now, this is a $275 sneaker. Super expensive. I got this shoe for $170 off of Nike. They had a blowout sale. They had the new version coming out, so they always drop the price on the previous release. This sneaker is the sneaker on which records were broken in. So I'll put the racer up, but he's a professional runner and he's a Nike athlete as well. And he runs in this sneaker. He runs marathons in the sneaker, in fact. And this shoe has so much innovation, but again, lightweight, durable upper, and a high performance sneaker. So background on the sneaker. This sneaker was first a prototype for this runner. This runner has broken the marathon record. I believe he did the marathon, which is 26 miles, guys. Crazy. He did it in two hours. Like It was like two hours and one minute. Nike gave him this prototype. Said, here, try the sneaker out. It was an unofficial marathon. He did it in one hour and 59 minutes. So it's officially not a record because the race itself was an unofficial race but he did it in this shoe so we have the zoom pods in the front right this is very close to what we see in the Giannis Greek Freak 3 by the way and then we have this plate you'll see it there it says the plate some sort of carbon fiber plate which again was done in 1995-96 and then we have the Zoom X technology all throughout. This is the best foam cushion you could possibly have. And then Zoom Air is the best performance cushion you could possibly have. So they combine both in a super lightweight knit upper. So this is stretchable by the tongue, but everywhere else it's very rigid, but very breathable. If you wear socks, you could definitely see the socks right through it, all right? This is a fantastic shoe. This is really one of my favorite shoes so far. Just to even bullshit and walk around, take my kids to the park in. Um, this is a fantastic shoe, man. But again, it's lighter, it's durable, it's breathable. 
we're seeing the patterns of what Nike's always trying to push, a lighter shoe and a more performance-based, breathable shoe, more durable shoe. So there's that, right? Now, I think we're done, right? So here we have the innovation that Nike's pushing. We see it in the NBA stuff. We see it in the baseball stuff. I'm hoping they're able to put their own spin on the baseball jerseys. We definitely see it in the football jerseys and then all the other sports as well. But to me, the quality that's being put in is the performance aspect of these sneakers, the performance aspect of the materials being used, the lightweight materials. This is quality. This to me is quality. It may be a different quality than what most Jersey people or most sports heads look at as quality. But this guys is quality. So before we end this video, my question to you is, does lighter performance equal better quality? In my opinion, yes. I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say about it. On that note, your boy is out. Peace.